Good day, welcome to my trapping workshop. I'm here today to present a series of videos on trapping selectively. Why present videos on selectivity? Because it's a challenge that every trapper must address. It's also a factor that can affect the social acceptability of the trapping. When it comes to being selective, there's a lot to consider. There are several factors that can increase the risk of trapping non-target animals. One of these is the time of year. If we're at the start of the trapping season, for example, we could be talking about October or November. This coincides with the migration periods of birds of prey. So these are certainly periods which increase the risk of trapping raptors. Another factor is length of time your traps remain set. The longer a trap remains in the area, the greater the chance of accidental captures. Another factor that can influence selectivity is the type of attractive. Certain attractants, such as baits, can attract non-target species to capture sites. Uh, there are certain types of lures that will be very specific, attracting one species rather than another. So these are factors that can help us a great deal to be more selective. Another thing is the trapping gear itself. Here we can see different triggers for body gripping traps. Trap size can also influence selectivity. With a smaller trap, a larger species won't be able to get inside, so that's one factor. The positioning of the trigger can also influence whether or not a species is caught. These factors must be taken into consideration. For several species, we use trap boxes, whether for weasels, mink, martens, fishers, or raccoons. There are ways of adapting these trap boxes to avoid accidental captures of non-target species. Here we see a box that has been modified for mink. This will allow the mink to enter the box, but not a domestic cat to access the trap. You have certain trap models, as shown here. These are traps designed specifically for capturing raccoons. These are foot encapsulating traps. These traps will only catch raccoons if used properly. You have other capture systems such as live capture traps, which can be used to capture canids or felids. These traps offer certain advantages, such as the possibility of releasing them, as can also be seen with capture systems such as cages. So, a species that is caught accidentally in a live trap box or a cage if, for example, a domestic cat is captured, the animal can be released. These are all devices or procedures that can help us. Other factors can affect selectivity. If we look at killing neck snares, for example, what can influence selectivity is the size of the loop or the height the loop is from the ground, which can target one species but will avoid another. In terms of snare design, we use a component called a breakaway device, such as an S-hook or J-hook, depending on its shape. This breakaway device is calibrated if we capture, for example, a cervid, such as a white-tailed deer or a moose, the force exerted by these larger animals will enable them to be released without injury and without any snare around their leg whenever an appropriate breakaway device is used. So, these are all approaches or systems that will help to increase selectivity. In other words, to help trappers targeting the species they really want and eliminate those that they don't want to have that are problematic and that they really don't want to catch.